Hey, Bruce, how's it going? Can you hear me okay? Hey, howdy. Howdy, howdy. Is the sound all right? Great. I uh, did some stuff and wanted to be sure. Fine. Great, Joy. Thanks. Hey, Zeus. Good. Well, uh, hey, Vegas. Neil, in, in S something. Joseph. All right. Um, Anika, hi. Bly, Eddie, Jean, in something, in S something. <laughs> okay, hey, Jerry, Thomas, uh, PSK31, greetings to you. Forbin Colossus, how's it going? You are COSC certified today, huh? <laughs> hey, Bruce. Tree, hi. Uh, Jay, how's it going? Okay, uh, let me tell you what I what I wanted to start about. Hey, Redskins, how's it going, Kurt? Um, the the accuracy. How important is accuracy? A watch accuracy to collectors of mechanical watches. I and mean, here we got these mechanical watches. By the way, I'm wearing my uh, Christian Vanderclaw uh moon watch today and when i say moon watch i should say moon phase watch uh but anyway so that's what i got on and uh it it uh, turns out to be very accurate it's got a, a soprod a10 in it and um and then on top of that it's got a, a christian vanderclaw gizmo for the uh for the moon phase so anyhow so we're, we're, we're watchers. I don't know. I, first of all, um, how, how many of you have a, uh, some kind of um, uh, time grapher and actually take a look at your watches? Hey, Tom. Mus. Um, I uh, just do something. Let me see. Hi, Richard. Um, I guess, how, how would I do that? But, uh, some kind of say just say I do if you if you test your things with a, a time grapher just compare to the time.gov okay that's that's uh, there's a lot of stuff online to do that with I don't have a time grapher it's next on my list of things to do all right good to know uh, you've got one Eddie uh, need a time grapher okay yeah uh, if you're assembling watches having a time grapher is a lot of fun hi Eric Kurt, um, okay, uh, let me see. I have a radio-controlled wall clock. Is, uh, Vegas, uh, Milgoss, is is that one of the wall clocks that's, uh, when you say radio control, is that is sort of hooked up somehow to a, an atomic clock somewhere? Um, the, the reason I'm asking is that, uh, to me, it's not so much the accuracy per se as it is an indication of how my watch is doing if there's something wrong with my watch and it's and it's off uh not too long ago my um uh fp journ chronomat souverain uh suddenly was really off and so i uh i talked to the guys in new york about it at the boutique there and they said oh it's probably nothing but a um hi joy it's probably nothing. Well, it might be nothing, but a um, magnet. It became magnetized, and so they demagnetized for me, and it's been keeping perfect time ever since. And so, like I said, I I use it to some extent. Like if something's going wrong with my watch, I want to know about it, and so uh, that's where a time grapher comes in. Now, something uh, recently occurred or happened to me. Uh, do any of you have that? Uh, where is my gizmo? Here it is. Uh, do any of you have the? 
oh, let me see, uh, Frederick Constant, uh, analyzer, this little thing. Hi, Dennis. Uh, do any of you have any of these? Because this one, I this was so easy. All I had to do was to plug it in. Kurt, you've got one. Um, Kurt, do you have a, a an Android or an iPhone? It goes on your ear, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, before you get one, anybody, uh, this has been great. Android, okay. Um, here's what happened. I, I got a new iPhone, and the new, it's a, what's that called? It's called an XS Max. And it doesn't have a, the kind of uh, RCA jack for this. Uh, the new ones have, um, you know, one of those little micro uh, connections. And so, uh, lightning jack, huh? The, and so I can't use it anymore. I traded in my old uh, iPhone on it. And so now I got to get out my big one. And uh, so it just, it's just something. The thing that's so great about the Frederick Constant Analyzer, I use it for keeping track of everything. And so when I, I, I could check the accuracy of my watch over time and just sort of do it. Now I'll have to write it down or, or something like that. I just, just a, just a piece of trivia. Okay. So let's take a look at what we need or what we're supposed to have for hi Abdul. Um, what we're, what we, for what constitutes a, 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 what's supposed to be a good accuracy rating okay now i'm going to use the cusc values for a mechanical watch so they have different ones for uh different uh for quartz and, and mechanical so we're going to use the mechanical and uh companies like pedic philippe of vastron constantin autumn rpa they say our ours are so high we don't need it uh, a lot not all but a lot of vessel and constant tens now have the geneva seal ever since <laughs> paddock philippe decided to give themselves their own seal <laughs> that's their own constantine is getting a whole bunch of them now and i think that includes some some really good things with hi jay uh, so the these are the parameters you have to keep. And this is why you need a time grapher. Uh, first of all, the average daily rate of minus four to plus six. Uh, a lot of mine are out of that rate. <laughs> okay. Especially my older ones. Uh, it's supposed to have a mean variation in the rates of two. This is, these are the COSC standards. Uh, the greatest variation rates uh, five at 38 degrees centigrade. Uh, plus or minus point two tenths of a second. The difference uh, between rates and horizontal and vertical positions, minus six to plus eight. Largest variation in rates, 10 thermal variations, plus or minus point six, and rate resumption is plus and minus five. So it, it's, um, um, see Eddie, uh, the, so the, the whole thing, uh, is is what you need. Uh, how do you, uh, I, I I don't anymore. <laughs> I can't connect this. I'm gonna see if I can get a hold of Analyzer. Or have some friend uh, uh, see if he can fix it for you. Uh, they'll find somebody who knows how to do that. Uh, but right now I can't use it. So I I use my uh, Weezy, uh time grapher. Those things only are about a hundred bucks or something like that, and they're they're not the kind of high grade ones you get for a, if you're a professional watchmaker. Uh, but they're good. It's funny. One of my watchmakers, my main guy, I I think he's. Uh, I, I was telling um, Art <laughs> that he, the guy's like the the uh, pinball player in uh, that old uh, in the old Tommy song about the deaf, dumb, blind kid and his, uh, plays a mean pinball. And he does it by uh, touch and feel and sense. That's what my 
<laughs> I've got this guy who's really great. He's an old timer. And for me to call anybody an old timer, they really got to be an old timer. Uh, and he does uh, a lot of my uh, uh, w fixing watches for me and watchmaking. And so I took it and I said, now, I, I said, I said, I told him what I wanted on the time graphers. I don't use a time grapher. This guy's a watchmaker. I get the watch back. I put it on my time grapher. It's perfect. I don't know how the guy does it. So I think he's sort of like the guy, he's that pinball player who's a deaf, dumb, blind kid who plays by it. He smells it and it's right on time. Uh, but anyway, these are, these are some of the things. And in terms of my own stuff with watchmaking, uh, you know, taking apart those 60 uh, ETA 6497s and 98s, man, I tell you, uh, you know, I take a little toothpick and just just touch that uh, the regulator pointer, and you can you can do a pretty good job. I've had those things come in excellent uh, doing that. So, anyhow, uh, perfect pitch as applied to watches. Yeah, <laughs> guys, either that or the sense of smell smells just right for <laughs> my guy. His he has very reasonable rates. It's, it's, and some of my watches are are fairly reasonable. I I can't take my really good watches to the guy. I mean, he's a he's a great guy, but he he sort of like a has a pretty narrow uh, things that he works on. But he boy is he good. Uh, I, I he barely speaks English most of the time. Uh, I say something and the jeweler says something. I think in Russian. But anyway, the guy's really cool. So here you have these things, and you, you know, back in the old days, they didn't have time graphers, but they sort of figured it out somehow, and this guy does it. And um, it's, it's really sort of fun to know somebody like that. The other guy that I had, I had him work on my um, uh, Zenis when I first got it, uh, Zenis Elite GMT. Sent it to him. He charged a lot. He's one of these, and, but he's very good. And I, right before I retired, so he did the thing. He said, oh, it's perfect. He said, you know, you got, you got a great watch. And so I thought something else was wrong with it. So I sent it back to him. He said, there's nothing wrong with this watch. Uh, he said, it turned out there was something wrong with me because I was looking at the wrong thing for the GMT on it. But these, these are things, I think there's, there's a certain point where, you know, there's one watch I have that runs slow and, I keep thinking, well, I'm going to put it on a, on my, uh, I, I went out and bought a uh, demagnifier. And I thought, well, I'll put it on the demagnifier and see if that helps. But then on the other hand, I'm, gee, I don't know if I want to hear that. Hey, Adam, how's it going? So there's a, a, a kind of thing with, it. yeah, I like accuracy. And if it really goes off, it's not so much the accuracy that bothers me because I've got enough watches. If one's not accurate, I'll put on another one. Uh, but I, I, I worry about something being wrong with them. I mean, especially some of some really good watches. I don't know what I'm going to do when it comes time for the uh, H Moser because that thing has a. Uh, th they quit making them in any amount because of the complexity of the uh, double hairspring and how that keeps the balance wheel right in the middle of where it's supposed to be because they have the, oops, I uh, hit my microphone. The, um, anyhow, uh, that's something else. Okay, let's see, what do you got? Okay, you have a couple of SKXs and the accuracy is pretty bad, so the, so is the power reserve. They're just beaters, so yeah. Um, I'm a movement snob. I like accuracy. Okay, now th this brings up the next section. I, I, Jay, I, I don't think you're that much of a movement snob, and I'll tell you why. Um, the if we really want great movement, all we got to do is you know dip into our savings and pull out ten bucks and go buy a uh, high hobby or and, and and buy a um, a quartz because they will get really good, um, very good accuracy. Uh, a friend of mine who's a really a world class uh, watchmaker uh, up in north of here, he 
he told me that he said they're working on a clock and they're they're doing it in a vacuum and it's a mechanical clock and they they set up a vacuum for it and they have everything is done so well and so accurate as accurate as a as a uh a quartz so i'm thinking okay here you got this this real expensive clock you put in a vacuum to try to have accuracy of quartz rather than but here's 10 bucks. I'll take, I'll take that one off the, you can buy them on the street. Okay. Would you get your watch for an accuracy issue by an independent or always the AD? Let's say something like a Moser. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, well, especially my Moser. Cause that's the one with the uh, double hairspring. No, I, I spent a lot of money for uh, having to get something. Hi Mason. I, uh, I spent a lot uh, for my uh, FP Jorn. So on my really good watches, I mean, uh, I'm very particular about that. There's something, <laughs> yeah, electric clock on your microwave runs fast. I can never set mine. Uh, see, it doesn't have to be a great movement to be accurate. Uh, my ETA 2824, less than a second a day. That's good. Yeah, that that's true. I, also, too, like, I, if, it, my own modest, uh, and, and, and uh, that's no, that's not false modesty, but modest watchmaking skills. I can get those things ticked into almost nothing. They're great. I mean, and this is with a an ETA movement. So Neil doesn't surprise me that your twenty eight twenty four slash two is less than a second. By the way, most of the slash twos, I think, by ETA, they pump them up to. Uh, if they weren't, they they put them up to four hertz. The older ones at three hertz, I like because it's got to do a lot more. Okay, uh, so what else is uh, what else about uh, variation? Uh, one of the things I don't I get sometimes uh, variation at different uh, of what you call them attitudes. If they're face up, face down, face side, to the left, to the right. Uh, all of the different positions you're supposed to put them in. And usually I don't find a whole lot. Uh, it was really funny. The other day I was working on a watch, getting to check any accuracy of it. And uh, what I found out is that the the least accurate was when it was face up like this. In other words, the way, the way my watch usually is. On my Android phone, I use an app called uh, Clock Sync, which tells me the time directly from a time server, uh, yeah, yeah, you can do things, uh, Mason, uh, those kinds of things. There's one that I have, uh, there's an app that I got that tells me whether my uh, my watch is magnetized or not, and you put it up and down on the uh, screen and it's supposed to tell you whether it has, it's magnetized, and if it is, and uh, if it's bad enough, it, you can you can find out about it see if any problems with it uh spring drive okay now abdul and the spring drive let me say something about these the spring drive um and, and this is more me than than anything else but i like the slower movements i i i've become a big fan of those i like the big balance wheels for the 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 steadiness of it and of course if you speed up a balance wheel and and use a higher hertz rate, you're going to have more accuracy. Uh, uh, I would never argue with anybody about that ever. But on the other hand, you've got to have a really finely tuned watch at the lower uh, speeds. And I think better, oh, what? Uh, in terms of the construction of the watch, you've got to have a really fine one. Uh, this one, one of my new ones, uh, this is my uh, Lang & Hein. Oops, there it is, my Lang & Hein. It's, time, it's almost perfect in timekeeping. And it runs at two and a half hertz. All right, so that's like, what, 16,000 vibrations per hour as opposed to 28.8 for most of not mm, about maybe half of my watches uh, are the faster speed. My uh, both of my uh, Parmigianis, I think. Well, at least one of them is uh, runs at uh, four hertz, and um, 
this one, though, this is the interesting thing. This is my outlaw movement uh, by Jacquet is in here. By uh, I forgot his I think something Jean Philippe Jacquet, the guy who had to go to jail. Uh, and anyway, his stuff is at a at a lower hertz rate, which I like. I think his is at three hertz. Now, what's the problem with a higher hertz? Uh, well, nothing in a way. I mean, like you know, this is why quartz is so accurate. They got a theirs are through the ceiling. There, the problem that I see it is 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 this is that first of all. You're you're going to have a service quicker. You, it just I mean you the physics of it and the uh, the engineering of it. You're going to wear out parts more. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing, like I said, you don't have to have quite the fine touch to the construction as you would with a, a, a with a slower hertz. So if you have an accurate slower hertz. You have it in pretty good shape. Watches with zero reset feature are really useful, but they're few and far between. Mason, that's something I don't know about. I'm going to have to find out about that. That's neat. Tom, uh, Thomas Burnett, yes, uh, those Wang and Himes are amazing. So if anybody's interested in getting one, they are great. I, I, that I can tell you. They're just, they're great. Uh, Kent, right now, um, they're really great. You know, I tell you something. Uh, Lang, uh, A. Longa has an amazing limited edition zero reset. Okay. Uh, Emerald Chronometer by Emerald Sequoia LLC. Okay, they have one. I really don't like non-hacking. Uh, okay, howdy. The problem with hacking, all right? Now, there's there's different kinds of hacking. The I really don't like hacking that basically you, you got your balance wheel, and then you can see these things. They come down on the balance wheel like a brake for hacking. That's one kind of hacking. There's another kind of hacking that stops the, the movement gears so that you're not slamming up against the... Uh, the balance wheel. Uh, hi, Ant. Um, the, 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 the point about that is that, uh, ah, that guy, who's the guy who's ahead of uh, Patek Philippe? Anyway, uh, Patek Philippe, the, the guy who's ahead of it, he was talking to his engineers, and his engineers says it's not good for the watch, period. And uh, now Stern, yeah at one time. So that's why Patek Philippe's don't have hacking. So it, it it's like the, some watches, and I think H. Moser has hacking, but they 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 don't have this thing that, you know, those old fashioned stagecoach brakes they show is that they, it pulls the thing and a thing clamps on the wheel. That is what um, is, can be problematic. I think uh, is the uh, is that kind of thing going hitting the balance wheel like that? So anyway, okay. That that now, like I said, in some of this stuff it's just you know one of the things. Here we are. We're collecting antiquated technology, <laughs> movement technology, and we're worried about all of these fine things that we can always say, hey, I'll just check on my iPhone or my uh, Android and check the, what the what the time is is hooked into some atomic clock buried under a mountain for security. And then we're worried about these these kind of things, but that's okay. Heart, yes, hacking. Well, l listen now, this is what this is why Patek Philippe doesn't have hacking. Uh, so Anyway, uh, you don't like your Speedmaster because it doesn't hack. I don't know. I I would like it because it doesn't hack. Uh, hey, after all, Bruce, look what the uh, look what they did without hacking coming back on Apollo thirteen. <laughs> they timed it just right. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, like I said. I there's a certain kind of hacking, and it's 
Oh, it's not called a hacking. It's something else. It's, it's called a second stop. That is a term that I look for, a second stop. And, there, and the reason it's called second stop, because the only thing you see moving is the second hand. Yeah, it stops the seconds, exactly. And But there are different ways to do it. And they have uh, H. Moser uh, has made a big deal about that. How do you, they, if, if the, they may have some that do. All I know is that this is what they said. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, right, right now I happen to like um, the Omega Speedmaster. I'm trying to think which one it is. It's it's their Moon Watch uh, with the Lemania uh, base movement in it because that was the original one. I was looking at one today. They aren't that expensive. I think you, you can get some pretty good deals on those, and uh, that's something that's very tempting. Anyway, uh, there's so many watches that are very tempting. I, I've got to be careful. Okay, uh, some PPs hack. Well, uh, they may. I, I, all I know is that the uh, sort of they have a general policy not to hack. And now maybe they came up with something. Uh, is the only hacking patent? I think it's fifty-two thirty-five. It, uh, like I said, I. All I know is is what I read, and you know maybe they uh, maybe they came up with their own uh, second stop. Uh, a longa uh, boy as featured on Watchfinder. Okay. Um, thing I liked about a longa is a uh, what's that call a chain and fuse. That's sort of cool. Uh, has who has better movement, Zenith or JLC? Oh man, um, I don't know. Hi, Michael. I, it, you know, I, you know, you guys can. I, how can how, how can we resolve anything like who has who's has better movements, Zenith or JLC? How do you determine that? I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, my wife has a JLC. A reverso that has just been a fabulous watch, uh, and so I like it. And I have a Zenith. I have a Zenith Elite. And that thing is perfect. So I like them both. And how do you say? Maybe one model is better than another model. Uh, the El Primero gets all kinds of press, but I like the Elite. In fact, what I would really like in Zenith, I think, is, and what I do like in JLCs are the hand-wound ones. Uh, overly obsessive about accuracy. Uh, that's okay, you know. It's it's like it, it's 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 sort of fun to try to get things as exact as possible because we're dealing with a technology that that's almost impossible. Yeah, it is that too uh, for Burn Colossus. I, I like checking my watch and, and making sure it's as accurate as possible. And like I said, is that since I avoid watches that hack, most of mine don't. And as a result, uh, I've got to be careful <laughs> about, about setting them. Um, but like I said, is that, you know, I, I set them with my iPhone. Right now it says 357, and my watch says 357. So th this is... I don't know. I wish you guys could see this. Let me see if I can bring it up to the, bring it up close and show you why. Why sometimes, let me see. Can you see that? Okay. Okay. There it is. Now look at that on the bottom. It doesn't have any numbers and there are no indexes between the, uh, the Roman numerals that it does have. And so it's, it's a fun watch. What I have to do is that once I'm past three o'clock when I'm setting it, I have to count the hours and then <laughs> do all kinds of things to get it as accurate as possible. And then, like when it's right on the hour or something, I can then I can set it. Uh, otherwise, it's like hmm. the Moser Diver is real nice. Everything that H Moser does is really nice. I, you know, that's. That's been my biggest problem is not getting another. Um, Hi, Roberto. Como esta? 
my bad Spanish. <laughs> I, I I was at one time I was uh, we used to, uh, we had this uh, medical group that I used to fly with when I had my airplane, and we were flying drugs into Mexico. <laughs> Maybe they were the good drugs. So, okay, how do you set a non-hacking watch? <laughs> yeah. No, what I do on a non-hacking watch, uh, this is that I, uh, when when you get to the when you're second hand, I think it it doesn't stop. Yeah, um, I put the watch at the at the top of the hour, or not the top of the hour, some index, and well i guess i you know come to think of it it's it's pretty much you go really fast uh i try to do it i put the uh i i put the put it ahead of time okay like if i want to set it at five uh, i'll put the uh the minute hand right on the five and then get it so anyway that's uh okay um how are we doing on time well we're just about out of time any any uh any last thoughts you guys have? I got to go at uh, four o'clock. It's four o'clock. Is this turned four o'clock? According to my watch, it's four o'clock. So listen, you guys, hey, thanks for coming. Uh, and was, I, I really like what you have to say. And so if anybody knows how to, how to change one of these, what I call an RCA jack into a mini one. Hey, Lawrence, Hoyer 02 versus Brightly No One. How, you guys, oh, how come you want to get into a fight or an argument? <laughs> Take care. Uh, oh, tomorrow I think uh, we're having our uh, uh, having the weekly Sunday one, and I hope to see you guys then. Take care. Ah. Uh.